on the bench today then we have a uh, gps antenna this is an antenna that was sent in by a subscriber he accidentally bought two of these so uh, he contacted me and uh, asked me if i wanted one to take a look at here on the channel and of course i said yes i uh, haven't taken a look at a uh, gps antenna before and they are interesting in their own right uh, this one uh, is made to be used on a boat um, it's got screw threads in there to add to the uh, appropriate pole but uh, it also has a, a built-in uh, amplifier i'm not sure how powerful that amplifier is but it works at five volts so i'm going to have to uh, inject five volts into this using a bias t uh, when we test it over onto the uh, test bench so let's do that first and uh, see what kind of response we get over on the uh, bench and then we'll open this up and take a look at it so here's the uh, setup on the test bench pretty straightforward really but this time we've got a uh, bias t in there to inject DC at 5 volts to power the little amplifier that's in the antenna but I will tell you now and I'm not sure why um, it doesn't seem to make any difference whether I power it up or not and normally if you take uh, an amplifier like this one here if I uh, didn't power this on you'd get no RF coming out the other end you would only get RF coming out if you powered it on but it seems that uh, the amplifier that's in here um, doesn't seem to make any difference whether it's powered on or not but uh, let's take a look at the network analyzer anyway and see uh, the output on there so here we are on the network analyzer then and I'm scanning from 1 gigahertz over here to 2 gigahertz over here and we've got these two dips of interest here this uh, second dip here is uh, around the uh, you know where we want it for GPS for uh, normal uh, open source GPS which uh, we all use around 1 point uh, five seven uh, gigahertz uh, there that's going to work really well and we've also got this second dip here this first dip which is around 1.2 gigahertz 1.3 gigahertz and i'm not really sure maybe somebody can let us know but i'm pretty sure that's uh, the gps frequencies for military uh, i don't think civilians are allowed to use that uh, gps signal there but uh, certainly if you wanted to uh, you know use this on your truck or your boat which is what it's intended to be used for it's going to work perfectly well for uh, GPS frequencies now getting into this is proving to be uh, a little bit tough because although uh, it's threaded on so this is screwed on top here they've also glued it as well now as you can see we've uh, got into this and now that we've got into it it is uh, rather disappointing it was as uh, the subscriber who sent this in um you know had a feeling that it's just one of these cheap little ones that you can pick up off ebay for around three pounds um <laughs> i've just got it on the, the end of this coax here got it onto this mount so you can mount it onto a pole um we've got this metal here which yeah could probably act as a bit of a reflector to get a little bit more gain out of this but uh, is is boat club selling these for around 50 pounds around 30 pounds off ebay but the real antenna that's doing all the work is about three pounds uh, you can buy them even cheaper as well if you want to buy uh, say uh, a few at a time you can pick them up for a couple of pound each but yeah it's just one of these cheap little uh, antennas in this uh, mount so a little bit disappointing and uh, it's just hanging here as well got a bit of a bad solder job going off there i have to say and we've just got some packing material stuffed in here just to stop this from rattling around if you shake it too much and there's no real strain relief on this so if you were to tug this quite hard down one end you, you run the risk of uh, ripping this out and i'm gonna get the macro lens out you can see the solder job that's gone in there it's pretty uh, it's a pretty nasty job really um, and this piece of metal here that's just uh, flapping around because it's not grounded it's not going to have that much of an effect over the overall performance of this but uh, yeah it's very disappointing i have to say especially with his boat club uh, probably buying these from china and just uh, sticking uh, you know 20 pounds on top of the asking price to make a little bit of profit but let's take a look at this soldering job up close
So now that we've removed the shielding, we can now see the amplifier that's on the underside of the uh, antenna. And it's a two-stage amplifier. We've got amplification going on here and then again here. I can't find anything uh, relevant to these two chips here. And I can't find anything relevant when I uh, put this uh, serial number into Google either. But uh, all of these uh, little amplifier modules are all roughly about the same that you get with these cheap little GPS uh, antennas. And they all tend to work around uh, 20 dB plus or minus uh, 3 dB uh, either way. Really, really simple stuff. Tend to work from 3 volts to 5 volts. Um, not particularly powerful, but just enough to give it a little bit of a kick. And you can see here now the mess of the soldering and you saw how uh, the shielding didn't uh, quite fit back on top of this perfectly. Um, I mean, you could have done this a lot neater. You could have just uh, had the signal wire going in to connect uh, to this part of the board here. And then you could have uh, soldered the outer braid of the coax directly onto the shielding itself. There was no need to lift it up to try and fit it in on the inside because the shielding makes contact with uh, ground with all four corners of this module. You know, a, there's a lot neater ways of doing this, especially if you want to use the thicker coax. So here we are, and uh, it was a few days later, I was uh, editing the video, and I decided um, I wanted to really uh, test the uh, little amplifier board that's on these uh, GPS uh, uh, antennas so I've got uh, one of the uh, amplifier boards here in fact I've got two of them unfortunately the original one I uh, broke it dismantling it but I managed to dismantle two here I've got one under test at the minute and I'm feeding in a uh, signal at uh, 1 dBm at uh, 1575 uh, megahertz and that's the output on the power meter so we're getting uh, nine and a half dBm uh, coming out of that uh, little transmitter compared to the 1 dB that we're putting into it uh, you can knock a little bit off for uh, loss in the cables things like that but you can see that they do operate around uh, 90, 9 dB of gain um, probably the manufacturer will say it's 10 dB but uh, again you can uh, subtract a little bit for uh, lossing the cables but uh, they do work at around uh, 9 dB 10 dB now let's just talk about the size of these uh, little panel antennas then for uh, the GPS frequency and uh, how they are so small because uh, GPS frequency well that civilians tend to use anyway uh, operates uh, at uh, 1575 megahertz 1.575 gigahertz and you can probably tell from the size of these they don't look big enough um, you'd expect something to be a lot bigger and indeed I've got a uh, panel here that I've uh, just quickly put together to show you the size comparison and this one is made for uh, 1.57 gigahertz for the GPS frequencies and you can see the sheer size difference between these two and the size difference, how you can get away with something so small with this one, uh, is all about the dielectric. And I've mentioned before in videos how the dielectric constant that you choose can make a big difference on the size of the element of the antenna. This one uh, has a dielectric constant of air, which is 1 plus 1.5 millimetres of FR4 board, which is between 3 to uh, 4.5, um, technically, you know, as, as an average. But uh, this is ceramic, and ceramic has a dielectric constant from anywhere between 30 to 40, depending on the material that's being used. And if you go online onto uh, any of the panel antenna calculators, put a dielectric constant of 30 or 40 or somewhere in between there into your uh, panel, um, you will find that the measurements drop drastically from something like air to something that, uh, you know, absorbs a lot of uh, the uh, RF uh, with uh, a dielectric constant so high like uh, ceramic. Now 
the one downside to using something like ceramic to shrink your antenna is you're absorbing uh, quite a bit of that RF into your uh, dielectric. And this is why you will see with all of these uh, little uh, GPS antennas, they come with the uh, little amplification board, which uh, helps give it that kick to uh, put it somewhere in the ballpark of something like this. And uh, that's why they're so small it's all about the dielectric constant and the dielectric that they've chosen and as i said the uh, downside of uh, choosing a higher dielectric constant to bring size of your antenna down is it doesn't perform as well as a normal size one so that's why we've got that little uh, amplification board on the back now i have to say that uh, i am a little bit disappointed to find this on the inside i was hoping for some kind of helical or maybe some kind of helical spiral in here um gps signals are uh, circular polarized signals they tend to be right hand circular polarized and as i've shown previously uh, if you get a mismatch you get a little bit of loss and again that's probably why these have got uh, a little amplifier board included on this to make up for that uh, mismatching loss and uh, the dielectric as well but uh, I'll keep my eye open and hopefully uh, I'll get a GPS antenna in here that's uh, circular polarised just for us to take a look at. It's always interesting, especially if it's designs that uh, we haven't come across before. But uh, yeah, if you see one of these on eBay and you're thinking, oh, I'll get one of those for my boat, then you're going to be just as well paying, uh, you know, five or six pounds for something like this because it's the exact same thing at the end of the day. So hopefully uh, you found this uh, video interesting. I haven't covered uh, GPS antennas before. Um, I have got a build coming up, but it's going to be next year now where I need to build a project uh, that needs to be GPS tracked. And I've been looking as well at uh, the GPS antennas, but I'll probably build one myself with circular polarization rather than uh, going ahead with something like this because I don't have to... Uh, take the uh, small form factor into consideration with the project that I'm uh, using but uh, hopefully you found this uh, useful and especially you know it's really interesting how the uh, dielectric constant the dielectric that you choose with your antenna can have a, a massive effect on the size of uh, the main driven element of an antenna really can uh, affect it in a big way with some different materials but uh, yeah if you did enjoy the video please give it a uh, thumbs up Comments or questions, drop them below. I'll do my best to answer them and hopefully you'll join me on the next one.